free sort of jazz and space feel for a lot of the songs with the lyrics. Um, what was the writing process like on your side? I was looking for something that for me was a little bit more thrilling or a little bit more uncertain or dangerous, whatever you want to call that. And we started, even though I knew we had songs, we started to do just these kind of, I wouldn't call them jazzy, but I, I understand where people could think of it as being jazzy. These sort of just freaky jams where I would play bass and Stephen and Cliff would play drums and we would rumble along sometimes for like a half hour and and I knew that we, you know um, they're such good musicians but I just don't really know what I'm doing and I think they sometimes really latch on to that because I'll stumble upon some some strange rhythm or whatever you know um, and I think once we started to do that a couple of times we stumbled upon things that we thought ooh that's that's more interesting than these kind of songs that we had been writing. And we kind of just sort of, you know, sort of led us along doing more songs based on these freaky, free form, you know, unknown sort of jams. I'm not really sure, you know, how anybody else stumbled upon sound and how they write songs. I just know how we would do it. And for us, it was a radical, um, it was a radical new thing. I'm not saying that jamming would be radical for everybody else, but it, it, it was definitely radical for us. And how did you come to the decision to make it, you know, 20 tracks? Um, well, double even, album. even in the very beginning, the, we knew we were going to make a double record, which I think is is exactly where this freedom to do this exploration came from. I don't. I think if we if we were, you know, if, if we had our mind set on just doing, you know, 10 or 11 tracks, we probably wouldn't have gone on this this bizarre exploration and I, and I I and I know that now I know that we were thinking well we'll go on this this we'll go out there and explore some weird shit knowing that we're always going to do the more normal songs and once we got off on the you know the bizarre journey we never really wanted to go back to the other thing and I had no idea that this bizarre music was would have rubbed out of us I think some of it is, is, is actually very sinister and and is is hinting at some some disturbing element of our of, of, and I don't, I don't want to say it's my personality I mean I, sometimes I feel like I'm just singing whatever it comes to my mind but it it definitely conjures up um, ideas of like sadomasochism and, and just kind of getting back to some I, I, in, in a sense I, I think I was searching for some kind of more pure animalistic version of myself. But perhaps, you know, after, uh, you know, 20, it's 27 years, wow, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of, of being together, you know, you, 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 perhaps you feel more comfortable combating, um, you know, that, that dark side, that sinister side that, um, that exists in music, you know. Um, well, you know, I, I know, or maybe I didn't really know it did exist, and once I discovered it, I was like, all right, I want to do some fucking <laughs> evil shit now, cool. I, mean, I don't know, you know. I mean, I, I sometimes think that, um, I think in the way that we wrote the music, I was kind of, I was really just singing to what the, you know, what the jams were that we made, and I, I, I guess that the, you know, this, this, the mood of these songs you know, really made me sing about different things as opposed to writing songs, thinking, oh, I'm, I'm this optimistic guy who thinks, you know, being happy is, is the answer to everything. And I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad that I, I have, I had some unknown depth or, or some unknown portion of myself. Um, I don't know if I have anything else to offer, but I, I'm <laughs> glad I found that, you know. Did you actively choose Bonnaroo, or, um, you know, what was the, the idea behind that? There's, I think, an element about Bonnaroo that's got that sort of dusty, mystical <laughs> atmosphere that'll, you know, I think, add to the performance. Oh, yeah, so. you're kidding. I mean, I, you know, at our stage alone, there'll probably be 40,000 people all taking acid at the same time. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't mean that'll be the only thing, but... It, <laughs> but it helps. You know, and, it, and, it, and it's just... I mean, you know, it, we're playing on the Friday, and so they'll still have a lot of energy. Who would you?
would you invite to your electric chair meal? Meaning, you know, your last meal yeah, on Earth. But, well, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, when we, when we did um, Ultima's parties um, at the end of last summer, you know, you kind of get this, this free-for-all idea that you can do whatever you want. And I, I, um, I suggested even having Muhammad Ali there and we could all go up and punch him in the stomach. And, <laughs> you know. um, so I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm, I, I met a lot of um, my heroes along the way, that being, um, you know, Nick Cave and, I, and I've met Pete Towns and I mean, I'm Paul McCartney. I mean, there's a lot of people who are um, already dead, like evil can evil or someone like that, you know. Um, <laughs> Um, but if I could pick and choose, I mean, I, I would love to have Barack Obama stop by, and I'd just be mm. like, hey, man, how's it going? You're, you're cool. I'd, I'd love to have Justin, Justin Timberlake stop by. That'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> um, Muhammad Ali, um, oh, the list would be endless. Um, it, would, it would just be, it would be endless. One last one for myself. <laughs> With Twitter and the I. Um, iPod, iPad, whatever you want to, you know, the various uh, Google, YouTube, what have you. Do you feel that the evil robots may be winning in today's society? Because you know that it'd be tragic if those evil robots win. Well, I think the robots are definitely winning, but I don't think people think that they're evil. I mean, I, people have been saying it for a little while now, this idea of, of 1984, where every, you know, you're being watched by the government. You know, that really is already true now. We're just, we're all helping it along. But I think people like it. I mean, I have to say, you know, in this, in this endless world where people are celebrated, you know, I've always said you just celebrate yourself and you make your own little world. And that's, I mean, that's what bands and scenes and punk rock and all that was anyway. You know, we didn't, we didn't wait to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. We would just make our own magazine, you know, back in the day. So I think, it's, I think it's like that now. You just make your own network and your own series of things that you think are interesting. Um, um, and I don't know if, it's, if it would be evil. I think it would be a little bit of both.